I'm Elisa, the Scrappy Wife behind ScrappyWife.com, and today I have a Traveler's Notebook process video for you. This will be the last entry in my Traveler's Notebook, and this current Traveler's Notebook, and then I'll start a new one for the summer. I have pictures from when I was traveling this weekend. My mother-in-law came into town to help out with the kids and help get them to all their activities, so I thought I would document that. Um, I'm planning on using items from the pink fresh line keeping it real it is such a wonderful line i absolutely love it so i'm excited to dive into that otherwise i will put you all on fast forward i will definitely link everything that i use down below heads up those are affiliate links it doesn't cost you any more but it does go a long way to supporting this channel all right let's go I am here to tell you over and over and over again that traveler's notebooks are by far the easiest ways to document your memories. I used to be a 12 by 12 scrapbooker. I loved it. It was so much fun, but I was constantly feeling overwhelmed and behind and almost to the point that I didn't even want to work or I wasn't really even enjoying the process by the end because I was just trying to pump out pages as fast as I could to get caught up. And that's not really what this is supposed to be about. Yes, we are documenting memories. Um, and I know we take that role seriously as I know I do as my family's uh, doc documenter. I want to make sure I'm on top of it, but it's supposed to be fun. This is a fun hobby. And so Traveler's Notebooks have been so refreshing for me. I do not document every single little thing. I pick little bits and pieces, a photo here and there, um, and it has been kind of a game changer for me. So whether or not you work in an actual Traveler's Notebook, maybe a deconstructed book or a mini album, I want to just encourage you to find a format of memory documenting that works for you. This is to me the easiest. Each page takes me about 20 minutes maybe, which I think is pretty good for documenting um, each week. And so I really enjoy it. As you can see, I'm working with a lot of torn paper. That's another way that I really like to save time. I think it provides an interesting look to my pages. I don't like to measure things out exactly perfect. That kind of slows me down getting caught up in those details. So I kind of wing it and that's what I'm doing here. I'm layering a couple of papers and matching the yellow over onto the left side. And you can see, I just knew I was gonna cut it extra big and then I will trim it down to fit the page. Um, some people might think that it's a little wasteful and yes, I do end up with some extra scraps that I might not have had before, but I really am trying to just use my supplies to go for it and measuring just slows me down. So I'm just gonna wing it and cut and trim as best I can and that is my style and I'm gonna just continue to embrace it. At this point, I have the background of this page done, and now I'm just going to trim out these photos. My kids had just the best time with their grandmother. They call her Mimi, and she came to help out while I was in Kansas because it takes a village, friends, to get all the kids to all the places. So she takes a photo with all three of them every time she's here, and it's really special to have that. So I'm going to match that photo photo on the same green paper that's over on the right side um, and I'm planning on putting this photo on the left. As you can see once again I don't measure. I just eyeball it for all of these things. It doesn't bother me. If it does bother you then by all means take some time do the measurements but don't let it um, keep you don't let the perfection keep you from documenting the memories. So we have the group photo over there and then two pictures of my kiddos. Um, one when they were going out for ice cream for a little special treat after school on Friday and then another when their Mimi walked them to school which are a couple of the memories that they shared with me the second I walked through the door. And I just love that they have kind of these simple memories um, that really mean so much to them. So just matting all those photos. This tiny one I did end up putting on a different paper because I wanted just a little bit of contrast because it was going to be over on the left side. Now you're going to see how just really simply this comes together. I kind of follow the same format every time I'm doing a traveler's notebook entry. I start with thinking what I want the background to look like. I use those torn papers and then I go ahead and mat most of my photos. You'll see me adhere them here in just a second. I get my photos down and I tend to work from big to small. So background and then photos, which are generally my next biggest piece on the page and then starting to work 
from there working into smaller and smaller um, little sections. And I'm loving these stickers. Again, this is the Keeping It Real line from Pink Fresh Studios. I like the format of these stickers. They are paper stickers, which makes them really easy to write on, um, but they're not so thin. Thick. They're not like super thick cardstock stickers. I don't know how to explain it, um, but they're a little thinner, which is nice because you can see this is a bulky, bulky, bulky traveler's notebook. And I'm just having fun layering some different pieces. So I have one that says this is really good. I love that piece that says daily grind. And of course, a little coffee cup because whenever you're with my kids, coffee is pretty much necessary, I'm pretty sure. Um, and then something else I'm loving recently is layering some different stickers together, especially with these label stickers. Labels have always kind of had my heart. I think it's the organizer in me. I love labels, but now I'm really enjoying not just using them as labels, but using them as layering pieces, which you'll see me do a couple different times. I originally had planned for all three photos to be on one page, but that looked a little crowded to me and I wanted some room for journaling. So I moved that one over on to the right with them getting ice cream. And then I'm trying to uh, see what else I can choose. I think that self-care one is super um, funny because I love that kids don't really think of self-care, but man, was there Mimi taking care of them by letting them go get some ice cream. So I thought that was cute. And then a little pick me up sign. Um, so it was fun layering all these stickers. See how easy it is for these entries to come together. It doesn't have to be overcomplicated. It doesn't have to be this big process. And in the end, I'm going to have a documented story ready to go. You can see there's my other little label cluster right there. And I think I'm going to put in this one, but I end up changing my mind. That was just a little too dark right there. Now that I've gone through the stickers, I'm going to take a look at the paper pieces with this line. I, again, this is one of my favorite lines. I think it is so gorgeous. I'm so pumped with some of the new lines that came out this spring. This one and then the color study line from Vicki Booten just completely have my heart all right, I'm bringing in those florals just because it was feeling a little bit boxy over on the left. I wanted a more organic shape to kind of break up some of the lines that I was seeing start to form. And then I'm trying to figure out if I want to bring in more pieces down here. I figured I'll take a break from layering on paper pieces and go ahead and add on some puffy alphas. So I'll label Mimi where it says right now, just so that it's super clear what we're celebrating. And then later on, you'll see me um, label the date June 2021. I used to just have traveler's notebooks, I would do one per month. But again, that got overwhelming. So now I do it just here and there. So this one is actually from the fall of 2020 through this will be my last entry in June 2021, just documenting a few stories here and there. And it has been so much fun and taking the pressure off of documenting every single moment has really brought back a lot of the joy of scrapbooking for me. All right, I'm going to use this puffy phrase sticker that says love this. I love these stickers come, come on clear sheets because it allows me to kind of audition the pieces to move them into some different places and see where I might like it to go. I'll label this right up here and then add on the little dot for the eye. And this page will be pretty much done. I just need to add the June 2021 and of course some journaling right here. Um, first adding the lines and then journaling about what was going on that week and some of the special memories that the kids share. And I love documenting the memories that they have, not just what I remember from a visit, but what they are anxious to tell me, because that really gives you some insight into what stuck out in their heads. And I just love that so many times it's the simplest moments. It's just spending time and their Mimi is certainly great at that. That is pretty much it for this page. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider hitting that subscribe button as well as the bell notification button. Let me know below if you have tried out the Traveler's Notebook documenting and if you agree with me that it has got to be the easiest way to document your memories. I have all of the supplies that I use listed down below. Some of those are affiliate links, so a heads up. It doesn't cost you anymore, but it does go a long way to supporting this channel. And a huge shout out to my YouTube members. Thank you so much for signing up and for supporting me. If you are interested in finding out more about YouTube membership and about some of the perks that they receive, make sure to click the link in the description box. I hope that you have a fabulous day and as always, keep it creative.